Hey, it's Mark from Ripple Training. So over the past few weeks, I've posted some examples of what you can do with the M Tracker 3D plugin from Motion VFX inside Final Cut Pro 10. Now, this plugin is still currently in a private beta. It's going to be coming out for real soon, but I thought I'd show you today what's possible with it inside Final Cut Pro 10. Now, I'm using Final Cut Pro 10 in this example rather than Motion because many more people use Final Cut Pro 10, but I think that's going to change, and I'll show you why at the end of this video. But right now, let's jump in and see how easy it is to track 3D text to video inside of Final Cut Pro 10 with the M Tracker 3D plugin. All right, so here we are in Final Cut. This is the clip that I want to track my 3D text to. I'm in the Effects browser. I have M Tracker 3D selected, and here's M Tracker 3D. Remember, this is beta, so things may change a little by the time it ships. I'm going to drag it on top of this clip, and then all I need to do, doesn't matter where the playhead is, is click this track button, and that kicks off the tracking. Now, if you've ever done 3D tracking before in another application, you'll know that this is a little bit crazy because it's a single click. There's nothing else to do. And this is not point tracking or planar tracking, it's 3D tracking. So it's attempting to figure out, analyze the scene and figure out where things are in 3D space based on the parallax in order to take that camera data and apply it to another object. If you've done this in another application, you'll know that this is usually a multi-step process where you need to solve for the camera, you build a point cloud, you need to clean it up. It takes some time and multiple steps and you have to do it over and over again. In this case, it's a one click. It either works or it doesn't. And most of the time it works really well, although you might need to do a little tweaking after the fact as we'll see. This track takes about five minutes. So I'm gonna jump to the end of the actual tracking. Okay, my track is done. And now we see an option to copy the track here in the inspector. I'm not gonna do that quite yet. What I'm gonna do is first add the object I wanna track. I'm gonna press X to set a range on this clip. Then over in the title inspector, under titles, there's an M Tracker 3D category that includes a great deal of different type of content that you can use to track to your scene, including these 3D objects that are built into motion. A little more on that later. So what I'm gonna do is go down to captions and select this title 3D01 and press Q for connect edit. Next thing I'll do is move my playhead back to the start of the project and in the title inspector, I'm gonna turn off the animation so that we see the title right away. Great, we see no tracking data available. Don't worry about that. Let's select the bottom clip. Now I'm gonna copy that track data. Then I'm gonna select the top clip. And I'm gonna click paste track. Now this takes a minute also, not as long as the tracking, but it's taking that tracking data that it captured and pasting it onto this object. So it's basically got a virtual camera that imitates this motion in the scene and putting this 3D text object inside a virtual scene with a virtual 3D camera. Okay, it's done, that was real time. I did not speed it up. I'll click okay. And my next step is to choose where this 3D text should live in the scene. To do that, I click this icon here and we get a set of axes. Ideally, wherever you click, these axes should line up with the green one pointing up, in this case, matching the suspension wires, and then the red one would be pointing uh, you know, horizontally, something like that, and the Z pointing forward or away. Now, it really doesn't matter too much because you can adjust this after the fact. So I'm just gonna choose a point around here, and sometimes you have to choose a couple different points. You can choose one, you can decide that's not right, you can choose something else. Uh, I think that one looks pretty good. Once you've done that, you click back on this to get out of that kind of mode of choosing where it goes. And if I scrub through it, it already looks pretty darn good, right? So, but a couple things obviously we need to fix. First, I'm gonna get rid of this reflection and the shadow that is being cast. We don't need those here. So in this title inspector, I'll scroll all the way to the bottom and then back up a little bit. And there's our reflection opacity. I'll bring that to zero and I'll scroll up a little higher, and there are two different lighting sections. This first one has to do with the uh, drop shadow that's being created by the light that's hitting this object. It's a light from motion. I'm gonna take that shadow intensity here down to zero to get rid of that shadow that's been cast by the light. 
The next one here, this lighting style, has to do with how the light appears on the text and how it self shadows. So I'm going to choose instead of diagonal left, diagonal right, because that's roughly where the sun's coming from there. Uh, the next thing I want to do, obviously, it's not quite right in its rotation and its position. In this title inspector, up towards the top, there are options to position this object, content position, content rotation. I prefer not to use those because you need to drag in them and it's a little more difficult. Instead, if I select the text, I get an on-screen control and my inspector switches to, from the title inspector to the text inspector. And we see it has position and rotation controls here, but I can handle this directly in the viewer. So I'm just gonna tilt that up to make it uh, a little more sense there. And then maybe I'll twist it Sometimes it's not clear if you should be turning on this axis or the Z axis. You kind of have to play to find the thing that seems to work the best. And that works pretty good right there. We can see it's a little bit off. As I move forward, that D drops down. So it seems like it's not quite in the right place. And this is where the tracker's guessing where this should be in Z space. And usually you need to adjust its location in Z space a little bit. So what I'm gonna try here is just pushing it back in Z space a bit and then scrubbing and see if that improves. And that does seem to be better there. It's not dropping quite as much. Once I do that, I can also pull it up a little bit and I can rotate it a little bit more to see if that helps. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less. And that looks pretty good. I'm gonna bring it up a little higher maybe push it back in Z space a little bit more. If you push it way back, you can increase the scale, of course. That looks pretty good right there. I'll maybe pop it back just a little, tilt it back a little bit more. And now I've got pretty darn good track going on right there. I might slide it down a little bit. So from here, I just want to do some formatting. Uh, I'll choose a different font. I'm going to choose this one called Prince Town, L-E-T. And I can change its size here, of course, but I'm really interested in its 3D properties. So I'm gonna increase its depth, just a little thicker. And then I'll scroll down. We already adjusted the lighting style. This is available in both tabs, but I'm gonna go down to the material. Instead of multiple materials, I'll go to a single and I'll change the material to metal and chrome. I get more of an interesting reflection going on there now. I can scrub through that. And the other thing I can do here that I've got that Chrome selected, I can adjust the intensity of the environment and then the environmental rotation. I'll pop this open and I'll start with Z and you can see we can change how that environment is reflected across the text. And I like to mess with X, Y, and Z to kind of find something that I like. And that'll change as this camera moves. You can see that reflection changing kind of matching what's going on with the sun there. I think I need to tilt this a little bit more that way. So you can see there's a little bit of tweaking you need to do with kind of rotation and position in Z space to get quite the right track that you want. I'm gonna move it up and maybe back a little bit more in Z space. But very quickly, I've got a nice setup there. Let's change the text itself to say Brooklyn, since this bridge leads into Brooklyn to the right there. And you can see very quickly, I've got a very nice tracked 3D text on my scene. So why do I think more and more editors are going to be interested in learning motion? Well, if you already use motion, you probably know this, but the M Tracker 3D plugin combined with motion gives you much more power and flexibility in terms of lighting, in terms of animation, shadows, reflections, all of that. And even aside from the M Tracker 3D plugin, Motion now supports 3D objects. It comes with a library of objects. You can import other objects and you can animate them, you can light them, and you can publish them to Final Cut Pro 10. There's a lot going on with that and a lot to figure out and understand. I have a primer coming out soon. I'm deep in it right now, so I haven't had a haircut yet, that explains in detail how to work with 3D objects in both Motion and Final Cut Pro 10. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe below if you want to get notified when it's available. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment below. We'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio. Yeah.